minutes. We should be coming in live. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is March 22nd, 2021. And we're doing our math uh, drop-in tutoring session number 72. Let's do a little mathematics. Let's see what this is all about. And uh, as the numbering goes, uh, we're around the number 72 of these that we've done, which is basically um, me my, making myself available for a couple of hours uh, around twice a month, sometimes three times a month to help people out if they need a little bit of help with uh, high school mathematics specifically. But we do touch into a little bit of calculus, a little bit of statistics, um, as well as some additional stuff in uh, higher level mathematics. And of course, elementary school mathematics is also a game, uh, which is basically, you know, understanding the basics of algebra and dealing with fractions, prime factorization. It should be a lot more. Elementary school, they should, they should teach a lot more mathematics, uh, a lot, lot more. Uh, but they're not right now in my part of the world, which is uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, coming out of grade seven in elementary school, that's when the kick kick out is into high school. Um, coming out of grade seven, you should know approximately almost all of the most, uh, the important chunks of grade 10 mathematics. So you should already know, as far as I'm concerned, in grade, coming out of grade seven, how to graph a line, how to factor polynomials, what polynomials are, what functions are. That's what it should be. Um, unfortunately, um, people coming out of grade seven in my part of the world that barely know how to solve uh, for X, for just a uh, one variable equation. Something we have to remedy, which is what these math sessions are about in large part aside from that uh welcome to another live stream um as far as who i am what this is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this work is about which is layered on mathematics patreon is a great way to do so i don't put anything beyond paywall everything's creative commons share and share alike and for those of you that want to support this work on patreon gang Thank you for the support. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this. Uh, we'll, we'll see where it takes us. Um, so far, so good. And we are slowly rolling out a lot of related content, right? Maybe through comic books, maybe through uh, some of the math videos we're, we're doing. We just spent two and a half hours a couple of days ago, or yesterday, putting together a summary sort of a exam for one of the modules that we're going to put together right fun stuff fun stuff and we are live streaming on twitch if you want to participate in these live streams as they are happening twitch is where you want to be at twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e for those of you that would support this work on twitch gang Thank you very much for the support, for the follows, for the likes, for subscribing, for coming to these live streams and mods, for taking care of business. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Parlor, VK, Minds, and Gap. You can follow the work there, and we do have a Discord page. Social. We do have a Discord page. Uh, you can go to our chat anytime you want and type in exclamation mark social and all those links will pop up including the discord link there you're welcome to join us if you would like slick mcchicho thank you for your kind words on discord health mental channel last night ah oh, my pleasure uh slick mac making the decision to drop out and return in a year after working to study math in a more relaxed practical university love lots of love man can't wait to see this one awesome slick make make sure you fulfill on your promises if you think that is really what you want to do uh, make sure you don't get caught up in the lazy 
sort of mindset because we are we have we do as human beings we do have a sort of a lazy tendency right like for uh, for you uh, uh, just to let you know for me um, and just to fill people in uh, it's okay I'm assuming it's okay uh, slick Mick, if I fill people in really briefly is that cool uh, because you posted on our discord and that's open so I'm assuming it's all good uh, but I'll wait until you tell me so <laughs> before I proceed <laughs> okay uh, just finishing off our little intro uh, we do upload uh, audios we, uh, audios of these live streams if we don't have any visuals which we do today uh, when we don't have any visuals we do upload the audios to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho as podcasts and those podcasts should be available on your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes uh, slick mc chicho of course share 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 like awesome slick mc um just to fill people in slick mc uh, uh, yesterday sort of uh, yesterday day before um was on our discord under uh, mental health i guess it was i'm not sure if it was under mental health or education or or mathematics uh sort of asked a question you know um his his heart was not in uh being in college right now right he was struggling with it uh, for obviously reasons right there's so much going on in the world right and just centralized education is is not rolling out nicely into uh, sort of this new paradigm shift that's being rolled out right so he mentioned that he's having a hard time trying to come to grasp with wanting to drop out and um you know wanted to uh convey how he feels to family and friends for them to understand why he's feeling this way that he needs to take a break right and i just sort of posted a little thing saying um that it's okay it's okay to step out right uh take a break for a little while but if you do want to you know it is something that you want to be into make sure you go back into it right so just to expand on that just to let you know where i was when i went to post-secondary education right i graduated high school and i got accepted into university right off the bat and i've shared this before but i'll share it again because the topic is there uh, i went into university right away right and when i wanted to university it wasn't like the university i went to was very high school like and i was really tired of high school i, I was i was done with the whole bubble mentality and the childish i was sort of done with it right but this university was very high schoolish right and i didn't f find it to be motivating me at all uh slick mc thank you for the tier one sub i uh, appreciate sport brother uh so i didn't find there was any motivation for me to continue my studies at university um when i went there right yonar thank you for the follow um except for two courses geology and geophysics i was into right physics mathematics chemistry english i just couldn't get the motivation to do anything in these things right and i was getting stressed out like i really didn't like it it was stressing me out right and this was a younger chicho right so i was a little bit more fiery <laughs> right so i was getting a little stressed out and just not happy about it right there's times where i would drive all the way to university days and it's like a 45 minute drive and i really enjoyed the drive it was like windy 45 sometimes an hour get there and i parked the car in the parking lot and i go ah oh, the hell with it turn on the car again back home i go to do whatever i was doing right or go meet up with friends and whatnot so after doing this for a year right i decided to drop out of university but i didn't just drop out and you know pick my nose right i dropped out and this was in sciences so i decided to you know go to college right university and college is different here uh, you go college is you know it is sort of classified as a lower level than university but to me it's not it's, depends on what you do with your education right how you're studying but anyway the, the category is usually you go from college to university i went from university to college and people were freaking out and i went instead of going staying in sciences because that's something i was in all the time i went to i enrolled in a business program right and after two months i realized i didn't want to be in the business program this was silly right so after being four months at the college i just dropped out 
and people freaked out again i couldn't explain to people why i was dropping out right you explain it to them they're like oh you're crazy you got and uh, uh especially family family was like oh what's this guy doing and you know the the poop hit the fan when i went and got a job as a graveyard shift in a gas station across uh a reservation native uh indigenous native i don't know what the correct terms is anyway we call the we call the reservation at the time right across from a reservation where there was a lot of conflict right there was so i witnessed for six months i was there i think and graveyard shift from 11 p.m till 7 a.m lots of interesting things happen so someone you know basically fresh out of high school it was a pretty cool place to be and i read books i read lord of rings right i wanted to read all three books i was a really slow reader so i was building on myself right people didn't couldn't understand this i told people oh i'm there it's really interesting you know seeing what's going on right crazy cool right i saw accidents i saw this i saw that it was crazy right and i was reading books but you couldn't explain that to people that look i need to take time off to read three lord of the rings books i'm a slow reader coming out of high school they didn't really teach me how to read properly so i have to teach myself so i'm learning right nobody understood right after that i took some time off went on a little vacation i saved some money went on a little vacation and then i enrolled back in i got my geophysics degree with a minor in mathematics that was my path okay just to expand on that it was i wasn't going to type all that out slick mick uh, that's where i came from and i don't think that's the path that everyone should take but that is a path that is there right which is a path that a lot of people do not talk about okay birdie here recently read a great saying goes something like uh quote everyone is in a rush to climb the top to the top of the ladder not many stop and check is the right ladder for them imagine spending your life to get to the top of the ladder to realize it's the wrong one end quote 100 percent agree birdie here right when you come out of high school or university or college you everybody needs needs to take about two years off to think about who they are realize how you want to interact with the world you've been in a prison system to a degree indoctrination regiment you actually acquire your freedom when you come out of high school for the first time ever okay some people go directly into college university some people go into apprenticeship some people go into work some people go travel whatever it is but it is your choice now to do that right think wisely and realize that the first choice might not always be the right choice right slick mick in ireland we go we go high school straight to a college or university i think that that a year might help me to develop personal and mature uh mature especially to read sorry if i sidetracked you uh ready for some math whenever uh whatever thanks for the great words brother and birdie too and indeed and this is not sidetracked this is education uh and as far as i'm concerned it's all education right um believe it or not uh when i when i get hired to teach people mathematics mathematics is maybe 30 percent of what i'm really sharing if the student listens 70 percent is about life okay so and people who have problems in high school and stuff like this it's not really content related it's system related right it's a structural issue okay so this is structural discussion uh fire exit chicho did you learn to read later in life or is reading something that didn't click for you by the way i'm a slow reader too uh fire exit uh when i came to canada i was in grade five 10 years old almost 11 right uh i didn't know how to read and write english uh, i knew how to read and write uh farsi and speak armenian and farsi and when i came here and you know grade halfway through grade five six seven and i get into grade eight and then they say i have to learn french as, at the same time right oh you have to take french as well i'm like man i'm just starting to learn how to do english and they're like no you have to do a second language i go well i already have two other second languages you know pick one armenian or farsi you know like i'm willing you know i know those base uh 
I'll, I'll learn those better. They said, no, we don't recognize those languages. Just imagine a system, centralized system coming up to Chicho in grade A and saying, we don't recognize your language. <laughs> My response was, well, I don't recognize your effing language either, right? <laughs> it was more confrontational for me. I took it as 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 what a I I I woke to the to the limitations of the system early in life. And gang, we will be uploading this video to Sensor Two, Bitchute, and Rumble, and at some point to Odyssey as well. Um, and you can support this work on those platforms by liking, sharing, commenting, uh, subscribing. And uh, if you're on SensorTube, you can join SensorTube membership, and there's a button there. And just a heads up regarding SensorTube it's having hiccups. We're slowly being demonetized. Okay. Um, the algorithms, the automation is going through uh, some of our videos and picking up some things. And there's a lot of. Uh, in, in school, you used to call them rats, thinks, people who bow down to centralized authority and they rat people out, right? Just because they don't agree with, and usually those people who are ratting people out, they're not bootlickers. They're not, they, they really don't have a perspective on life themselves. They are just minions of the centralized authority, right? So I guess some of our videos are being flagged. Uh, one of them was giving advice on how to deal with a bully. Uh, people were freaking out about that right so that was demonetized and after that and before that as well we've been getting zapped a little bit so right now sensor tube is algorithm is going through our videos and it's having glitches right so slowly what's gonna happen is I'm gonna reduce the amount of content even more so uh, loading on sensor tube uh, just a heads up the odds are uh, politics is not there anymore uh, the odds are personal finance and economics will not be there anymore uh, the odds are some of the life discussions we have will not be there anymore as well right I'll see how the glitches go with this and they're rolling in this tax thing that you have to fill in the Google's tax form you know tell them about your tax situation for them not to take off American taxes I'm in mean, Canada from your and I'm not gonna go through that like tax information is personal I have no desire to share that with Silicon Valley I haven't gone through the click so I don't know exactly what they're asking maybe it's not that personal but I'll deal with it as, a, as it happens okay uh, just a heads up for the gangs on sensor tube you're watching this on sensor tube I highly highly recommend stop watching it there and watch this content on BitChute or rumble there are no advertisements on BitChute and I believe ads are um, uh, kicked in for rumble right and one other thing if these glitches persist on sensor tube I will I know I, I I didn't do it YouTube sensor tube was doing it automatically without my hearsay going into previous videos and monetizing in role ads I only for 15 years been there I don't know how long ads has been available on sensor tube but I've only allowed uh, ads to be run on my videos at the beginning of the videos, right? If these glitches persist on sensor tube, then what that means is they wanna maximize their revenue intake while limiting your freedom of speech. So we're gonna start, start uh, up reducing the amount of videos we're gonna load on sensor tube, right? So we're gonna reduce the type of videos we're gonna load on sensor tube but action what is it action reaction solution solution we're going to stop reducing the number of videos we load on sensor tube right at the same time to get those sensor tube algorithms kicking in so they will actually promote our videos i will most likely go back and place in roll ads on all of my videos right and whenever i do that for any video i do that I will provide an option for people to watch those videos on BitChute or Rumble ad free, right? So be warned. I'm about to roll in some changes on SensorTube as a reaction to what centralized authority power is doing, right? 
it is what it is. Heads up. Really interesting. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure, fire exit. Aside from that, that's our little update, I guess, right? That's uh update of what's going on behind the scenes and his history little updates regarding education, right? Let me take these guys down. And we're here to do mathematics. If you want to talk about mathematics, if you want to talk about anything else, anything else is game. It is an open discussion. Just know that mathematics supersedes anything else. So if someone rolls in, no matter what we're talking about, someone rolls in with a math question, we can deal with the math question. Uh, and if the topic of discussion is too sensitive to be loaded on sensor tube, so be it. We'll not go on sensor tube. And uh, I might start loading on some videos on TikTok. <laughs> I just got to get the app loaded. Unfortunately, uh, I have to do some things on my phone to get the app loaded because I can't figure out how to do it on a desktop. It won't let me emulate it to change the profile and do this. So I have to go through it on a phone. Pooper scooper. <laughs> right? <laughs> and a couple of days ago, gang, here, let me show you what we did. This is math related, just to give you a heads up because there's no math questions right now. Now, one of the things when planning to do with uh, all the math content, this is something that's been in the works since day one, me loading this up, was basically we're gonna create modules for mathematics to teach mathematics, right? So a few days ago, or last week, basically, I went on one of my long walks and laid out one of the sort of a summative, sort of a final test that, or a summary uh, practice test that we would sort of the layout for it, uh, that I'm gonna to put together regarding um, factoring specifically right what the concept of factoring is and and we've created a lot of videos for this started back in 2007 uh, with series one of the language of mathematics and we continued and series one of the language of mathematics the first part from 2007 2008 and series 3a and 3b uh, as well as two as well have uh, a lot of stuff related to factoring and polynomials right slick mic it's amazing how how so many great 12 level people I know can do math and have no idea what they're actually getting <laughs> All right? Why should be, a, should, should be a fundamental chapter in all math books indeed. Um, what does solving for X mean and why am I doing this? What are the practical applications of this formula and why, uh, why am I being taught this? my my two cents slick make i 100 agree that's why when i started creating this content i broke up the content that i was creating into two different categories the language of mathematics which is the syntax of the language of math right how it works right algebra if you want to think about it and the other one was math in real life which is taking the syntax of the language of mathematics and applying in the real world right so we've created some um questions before on that right and we've created a lot of content on that 20 co2 redeem 1000 points thank you for redeeming the points and for those of you who are accumulating points and redeeming points just keep in mind that at some point this year just like last year we're going to do an auction sort of a viewer appreciation and auction off items and you can redeem them win them or bid on them using your point system okay so uh you can save your points or redeem them uh up to you okay uh just to just to let you know but what i ended up doing for the summative sort of a summary test we wanted to do i sort of went on my long walk and i i knew i already know how i'm going to create all this because i've been doing it for 20 years teaching my students right so i laid down what i was going to do right sort of point form and a couple of days ago we went through and we put the exam summit up together right so this information here is 15 pages right we sort of made this create that created this live okay while we're live streaming on twitch i'm gonna have the video up 
on sensor to pitch shoot and rumble so basically it's a two part summary right you would have my crazy chicken writing but the language of mathematics would be part one and math in real life would be part two so the language of mathematics goes through you know uh the different sections right section one is going to be prime factorization uh fact uh factor the following and then applying that principle of prime factorization to reducing fractions uh simplifying uh radicals right we did some we put some questions together and we did some we did the answers as we went right and then the next part would be factoring polynomials right and polynomial factoring is basically six different methods of doing it right one or a would be greatest common factor and then difference of squares okay and that's the way i would teach this chapter right and that's the way i do teach this content and then simple trinomial factoring complex trinomial factoring okay could we talk a little bit about complex numbers uh we can a little bit uh are you comfortable enough to talk about it or would you need to brush up on the practice i would need to brush up on it um slick Mac. very unfortunate because i knew the content really well 20 years ago when i was teaching it right unfortunately they took it out of the curriculum they took it out of curriculum about 18 years ago 19 years ago right so i studied it i've used it in electromagnetic magnetic methods and stuff like this like really as a geophysicist i specialized in magnetic and electromagnetic methods right and i used it a lot but i stopped doing geophysics about 21 years ago and i got into teaching uh, math and for one year it was still part of the curriculum when i was teaching it and then they took it out they've done down the curriculum in my part of the world gang they're teaching about 30 percent less content in every chapter every grade okay and probably every chapter every grade in high school in canada western canada anyway british columbia okay they've eliminated huge chunk of the curriculum that still was being taught 21 years ago okay and over time they've pulled stuff out right uh in the same time frame right and people wonder we have such why we have such problems maybe even just the imaginary number i and what it represents yeah we could talk about the imaginary number i no worries i'll save it for another stream i gotta catch up on those things right and then here we'll talk about that and then the next one is using quadratic formula here i'll run you through this i'll have the stuff up the pics of these up on our discord page most likely and at some point i'll formalize these instead of being handwritten it'll be like text or maybe someone can do it i have no idea then we got synthetic division right so this is everything we created we did two streams ago right two days ago or yesterday yesterday no yesterday we had a break two days ago yesterday no yesterday we did minerals two days ago we looked at minerals on their magnifying lens right and then we have solving for x which is just simple algebra right and then solving for the following quadratic so you go from simple algebra to a quadratic so uh, x to a power of one right and then more polynomial higher degree solving for higher degrees and then we went into graphing polynomials right so graphing a line is this one graphing quadratics is this one the way we're gonna present it right which is really important quadratics is lines linear and quadratics right and then we have graphing a uh, higher degree polynomials right and that's this part uses synthetic division that we did already and then you get into part two which is math in real life right what you're going to use all of that would be the syntax of the language of mathematics how do you do this stuff and how you go about it the technique right and then taking that technique and apply it in the real world first place we apply with quadratics is maximizing area right maximize an area given a certain amount of fencing and there's two methods of doing this right method one is 
completing the square. Method two is finding the x-intercepts. And then the other ones that we ran out of time after two and a half hours doing this hardcore, you know, there's these ones. I've already done maximizing revenue projectiles. You can do consecutive numbers and do all kinds of stuff like that, right? So it's fun laying it all down. It really is. And it was pretty, pretty cool going through it. And gang, don't forget, <laughs> sensor tubes algorithms might not might, might might not like this but don't forget don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor tube as for imaginary numbers, complex numbers. Take a look at this. What's the square root of four, right? Hopefully you can see this well enough. These pens are a little bit uh, sharper, right? How do you take the square root of four? Well, when you wanna take the square root of anything, it's called prime factorization. What we talked about in the first part here, right? A couple of days ago. You break this thing into things multiply it together to give it the top number, right? And square root means find two things that are identical to give you the, uh, that multiply each other, right? Slick like make two, right? So square root means a pair inside the square root symbol can come out as a single, right? So this comes out as a two, so the answer to this is two. Now you have to think, uh, a little bit and decide if that's the only answer you have right because what you're trying to do here with this number is break it down into numbers multiply to give you that number right so here's another option for the square root of four can you think of two other numbers that multiply together to give you four that are identical so two other identical numbers that multiply together to give you four we have two times two gives us four right what are two other numbers that multiply together to give you four? Put equally right as four to the power of a half, I think. Yeah, indeed. Because the radical, as we talked about, right? That's a power. A radical is this number just goes in the denominator and the power, right? So if we write down three to the power of two over I don't know, let's go three. Instead of going three, let's go 90. What do we want? I want a number that's actually, those. let's go 30. 30 to the power of two over three. You could write, rewrite that as cube root of 30 squared. Okay, that's what it really means. Chicho, I need to chill here for a bit. I just sent you a emotionally charged rap via dm and i kind of got out of control with my energy you need to calm down uh, time to learn some math time to learn some math thing mama and uh, i'll uh, depending on how big of a rant that is i might skim through it i might read the whole thing <laughs> right with square root two um by square root two give root four or would that give root two would say that again would square root two i recorded it just one verse ah one verse okay awesome uh then we're so slick mix says would square root two by square root two give root four or would it would that give two it would be both right so square root of two times the square root of two is equal to the square root of four which is equal to now it's not just two square root of four is not just two because as i asked what are two other identical numbers that multiply together to give you four well negative two times negative two okay negative two times negative two is four so you could write this as negative two negative two times negative two well two identical things that's what the root symbol means this many identical things can come out as a single thing right 
So this would be negative 2. So square root of 4 is really positive 2 and negative 2. There are two answers to this. All right. Should we do a quick review of uh, radicals, roots? Let's do a quick little review of roots, okay, before we go before we go any further. How's this stuff? I'm using new markers. I'm not sure if I really like these markers. They're hard to come off. We might revert back to the other markers. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, these are really hard to come out. Okay. This isn't this isn't dry erase. This is a difficult dry erase. Uh, Chisho, you should look into the uh, proof of numerology with regard to 369. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it in the past before, brother. For instance, that, yeah, yeah, I've seen it before in the past. It's cool stuff. There's a lot of patterns in uh, I rarely use any of these. I don't think there's anything left in this one. I think I got a little one here, do I? Let's check it out. Do we have a little one here? Oh, we do have a little guy here. It's rare I use these. I only got these things because sometimes you buy these things in packs and they come with it, right? And it's cheaper buying it with this stock than buying those things solo, right? The marker solo. Oh, look at this nastiness. Let's bring out a napkin. We're going to do this with a napkin. Being well, the rap has elevated your brain and your thinking. <laughs> 45 steps of me. <sighs> Let's talk about radicals. About radicals yeah definitely don't like these pens also four plus five is nine <laughs> oh fun fun let's see what we got let's see what we got let's see which color is gonna come out better let's talk about roots now think of radicals as this right radicals are basically any number in the in the denominator and the exponent is a radical right so if i write down 27 to the power of 1 over 3 okay then think of this as this 3 goes in the radical so this is really the cube root of 27. well what's the cube root of 27 cube root of 27 you break down 27 right and thank you for the follows gang apologies if i'm not catching uh Pens are proved. Those pens are proved. They are. I need a new batch. I gotta go get another batch. So, break down twenty-seven again. The mul things multiply together to give you twenty-seven, right? So twenty-seven becomes three times nine, three times three, right? So twenty-seven is really three times three times three. Now this number for the radical up here, if there is no number, it means square root. It means two, right? So there, when there is no number, it means two. When they put a number, it means whatever the number is. And what that number means is, if you find this many, this many of the same number inside, it can come back as one thing, right? So this thing says three things can come out as one thing. So three threes come out as a three, right? And there's nothing left in there. So the answer is, Three. So the cube root of 27 or 27 to the power of one third is three. Let's do a more complicated one. Let's go 32 to the power of two over five, right? Well, 32 to the power of two over five says this. Whoop. Take the fifth root of 32 and then square it. That's what it means. And usually you do the denominator first. You take the radical first because it makes the number smaller so the smaller num the number the easier you can deal with it right so fifth root of 32 well 32 is 4 times 8 4 is 2 times 2 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 
Well, if you're looking for five of a kind, because that's what the fifth root says, if you're looking for five of a kind, here's five twos, right? Five twos merge into one two. Five of a kind becomes one. So this is two squared, which is equal to four. Okay. Let's do one where it doesn't work out to an integer, right? What if you had, let's do, let's do this. Let's go 32 to the power of one third, right? So again, 32, but this time we're looking for three of a kind. So this goes in here, becomes the cube root of 32. And 32, we already know, is five twos, right? One, two, three, four, five. Two, 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 two. There's five twos. Well, cube root means three of a kind. Three of a kind can come out as one thing. So three twos come out as a single two, right? And then what do you have left on the inside? You got two times two. Can you bring those out? No. The cube root says you, they need to be three of a kind for them to be able to come out as a single thing. So whatever that can't come out is still in there. So two times two is four. So this the 32 to the power of one third is two and the cube root of four. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. That's basically radicals, right? Now let's look at how the imaginary number comes into play here. Okay. Easier to take off, eh? Yeah, much easier to remove. Now, take a look at this thing. So what if we had, what if we had, as before, square root of four? Square root of four, or four to a power of one half. Let's lay it all out from the beginning. Right? Just link everything up. So what if you have four to the power of a half? This means the square root of four, because the two comes in the radical. But if it's a two, you don't need to write it. By definition, the square root just means two, right? So two numbers that multiply to give you four are two times two, or negative two times negative two, right? 2 times 2 is 4, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So we have two possible answers, plus or minus 2. Okay. Now what if you had this? Negative 4 to the power of a half. Okay. So the whole thing to the power of a half. Keep this in mind that negative 4 to a power of a half because this negative sign is not being taken to a power of a half, the way you write this is negative square root of four, which is gonna be negative plus and minus two, which is really gonna be minus plus two, which is the same thing in plus and minus two, so it doesn't make a difference, right? So the negative sign in front here really doesn't change the game at all. Because plus or minus 2 is the same thing as negative minus 2. So you never really write down negative minus 2. So you write down plus and minus 2. Okay. What about this guy? This guy says this. What's the square root of negative 4? What's the square root of negative 4? So what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative 4? You can have 2 times negative 2. Chicho, my mood on a scale of... 10 is always 5, plus and minus 5. <laughs> Hopefully you hit the range in between a little bit too. So it means you're either uh, 0 to 10. No, no, plus or minus 5 would be you hit everything in the middle. So 0 to 10, which is great, right? You're not only, you're part of the, um, I guess integers would work as well, but the real number set and everything in between. So two numbers that give you negative four are gonna be two times negative two, but that doesn't help us out because the square root says, if two things are the same, you can bring them out, right? That doesn't work. Or 
negative 2 times 2, right? Which is the same thing as 2 times negative 2. So that doesn't work out. We can't bring it out. So instead of two numbers multiplying to give you 4 or negative 4, what do we look at three numbers that multiply to give you negative 4? What are three numbers that could multiply to give you negative 4? Hmm. Well, you could have 2 times negative 2 times negative 1. Well, that gives you positive. That still doesn't work. We need it to be negative. So, how about negative? Right? So, you can have negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Cool. Well, square root function is just defined to be the positive square root, mainly because it's nicer and lets it be a function. It's only system. Uh, system veil they only say positive uh, up to a certain grade after a certain grade you have to look at it as plus and minus you have to look at both options right there I wish they taught that earlier right they always say oh it's, it, we define it as being the positive but it's only a positive in certain systems where the negative is not allowed in other systems if the negative is allowed it could be negative so what I tell my students is I start teaching them this in grade 9 and grade 10 because in grade 11 you have to look at the positive and negative all right why do you have to look at the positive and negative here let me write this down Ooh, what a beautiful equation this is or formula x is equal to negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a can you appreciate why it has to be positive and negative now? Because when you're solving, and this is the quadratic formula, right? The quadratic formula allows you to solve for x when given a quadratic equation, right? So the plus and minus comes into play because if you have a quadratic formula, which is really a parabola, right? Something like this. This x value is really giving you the x intercepts is giving you this point and this point and the way you get both those points is because you have plus and minus the in this quadratic formula and the plus and minus plays like this this is the axis of symmetry for a quadratic equation right negative b over 2a is your axis of symmetry and plus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a is this distance here and minus is this distance here it gives you both directions right important the plus and minus where are we the plus and minus is important they just don't tell people how important it is until later on which is unfortunate right they should be teaching this in grade eight and nine and people should know it well in grade 10 okay the plus uh, plus minus appears in the quadratic formula because you took a square root for sure if you didn't take a square root to be only positive the quadratic formula would be wrong to be only but by definition if you take the square root you need the plus and minus the plus and minus doesn't just come into play in the quadratic formula it's part of what happens it's like is the reality of the situation when you take the even root of any number you're always going to get a plus and minus it's there you can negate the minus you can eliminate the minus if you want right really you can eliminate it or dismiss it or say it doesn't apply in your system but you have to appreciate that it's there and by applying the language of mathematics because this is just straight up syntax that's what it means right but by applying the mathematics in the real world you can decide to accept the negative or not accept the negative let me try to reword this reword it yeah 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 yeah. that'd be cool system veil plus and minus appears let me read the what you wrote before as well 
again the plus and minus appears in the quadratic formula because you took a square root yeah if you didn't take square to be only positive the quadratic formula would be wrong if you didn't take the square root the square if you didn't take the square or square root that's the square root if you didn't take square root to be only positive yeah if you if you only took the square root to be positive then the quadratic formula would be wrong because you wouldn't get this other half of the quadratic function you would only get that half right let's see what the rewording is before we move on i like math tangents they're cool or let me finish this off and then we'll deal with that right while the rewording comes in now take a look at this thing here's three numbers that multiply to give you negative four here's three more numbers that can multiply to give you negative four instead of having a negative two here get rid of the negative two and go times negative one so negative two times negative two is four times negative one is negative four so this works out two times two is four times negative one is negative four so this works out as well well the square root symbol says hey if you have two things that are identical you can bring them out as a single so here is two negative twos they can come out as a negative two here's two positive twos they can come out as a two so again we have plus and minus two plus and minus two however in both situations we have a negative one still in the square root symbol so square root of negative one now there aren't two numbers that multiply to give you a negative number negative times a negative is positive so this is a special number that appears and our definition it is a definition that we've come up with we say you know what let's simplify this instead of because this appears in a lot of places it comes up a lot right square root of negative one electrodynamics uh, electrodynamics um, electromagnetics magnetic methods water electricity you get the square root of negative one in play in the real world okay when you do the mathematics so and when you do quadratics you get the imaginary numbers coming up stuff right so what we did because this appears a lot just like the number pi right this is pi everyone knows what this is this is 3.1415 dot 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 right we don't have to write it down by decimal places we just come up with a symbol to represent pi well we just come up with a symbol to represent the square root of negative one we call it i so by definition i is equal to square root of negative one so to simplify what we wrote we can write it as plus and minus i right plus and minus plus and minus two i right so all we do we just replace the square root of negative one by i okay and in mathematics whenever you see i with a number or just i by itself we define it to be the square root of negative one okay that's all and then there's different ways you can look at this you can look at it as a the third dimensional plane as graphing in and whatnot um, unfortunately i used to know how to apply this we did apply it we graphed it and stuff like this and it definitely comes into play in, in electro electromagnetics and stuff um, because we graph we actually uh, provide graphs of the the complex number readings that we're taking because they provide a certain type of information uh, give us more information about anomalies that we're looking at but i haven't been teaching it uh, for like 20 years now uh, they took it out of the curriculum so I'm, you know and i haven't done geophysics in like 20 years so i'm not going to apply this okay i hope that's clear regarding i that's all i is i is the square root of negative one it just appears if when you do mathematics if you're taking even roots of any numbers right here's a rewrite of uh, system talking about the plus and minus the solution to x squared is equal to four is plus or minus two you need both solutions to be correct so you're saying yes i'm just saying we take square root of x to represent only the positive 
because if you don't it's not a function yeah for sure if you're talking about functions only 100 percent right function and square roots ha having two positive out outputs would make there be four numbers the quadratic formula would give us uh four numbers it would give you two numbers uh like square root of da, 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 would be two values wouldn't it yeah check this out here now what what system is saying is 100 percent true when we're talking about functions right so and this comes into play here watch this i'm going to kick it down for you um the, one of the first places we encountered this right let me see if i got a pen that's going to be a little darker better coming out is that better yeah maybe i need a whole new one let's find let's find a pen that's going to be nice and dark <laughs> that's not it let's dump that one oh that's not bad brown we use brown here we'll keep this one here let me see the red one too oh that's nice that's darker let's use the red one okay now take a look at this thing talking about why a function would not be a function or a relation would not be a function if you had a positive and negative outcome when you took the square root of a number square root of function right now one of the things that happens in mathematics is we try to manipulate functions change things around to see what happens to them right so just imagine just imagine you had this y is equal to x squared all right let's assume we wanted to graph this function all right now graph of this function is a quadratic we've done a lot of quadratics before or you could just create a table right so let's just create a table right just so for those that want to follow what's going on here you don't have to know about quadratics and the quadratic formula and um, completing the square and stuff like this to be able to graph this so this is just a function right a function is just sort of a relationship with a special type of relationship where for a given x you can only have one y right for a given input you can only have one output and right now we have a y is equal to x squared and the x we consider to be our independent variable it's our input and y is our output right so if we want to graph this function to see what it looks like all we got to do is put in an input and get an output right put it in get it out so let's put something in for x let's put in zero for x and all you do you say okay y is equal to zero squared what's zero squared is zero okay so that's a point on the graph zero zero Boop. let's put another input one when x is 1, we get 1 squared, we get 1. So when x is 1, y is 1. x is 1, y is 1. Right? Let's put another point. x is 2. Right? Well, if you put 2 for x, you get 2 squared, that's 4. So when x is 2, 2, 3, 4. Right? Oops. Let's graph this better. So we're here. Right. let's put in three when x is three you get three squared you get nine Ay, caramba. that's four five six seven eight nine we're up here right. we're off the board so let's just graph this right here's what it looks like on this side oh, 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 oh. goes up like that right well okay we've got a feeling for what the graph looks like on this side of the y-axis right because this is this is your y-axis this is your x right that's where your x x this way y this way well let's see what it'll be if x is negative one what's y when x is negative one so you plug in negative one for x right so you're going to get negative one squared which is one oh one again so one and if you plug in negative 2, you're going to get negative 2 squared. You're going to get 4. Oh, so that's a mirror of that, right? Cool. Hopefully that's symmetrical enough. Symmetrical enough, right? So that's a graph of 
your base quadratic function, which is the parabola, which opens up like this. Right? Cool enough. Now, what do mathematicians do in their infinite insanity? They go, hey, what will happen if we switch the X and the Y here? Do -do 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 -do. Switch them up. Switch them up. What do you mean switch them up? Well, make the Y an X and the X a Y. Why? For the hell of it. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's do it. So what happens if we do this? Find. Yes, I want to do a different color so we know it's the different stuff. Green, brown. Find. Doop. Take. Oops. Take. <laughs> I don't want to write all capitals. Take inverse uh, y here take the inverse of it which means flip the x and the y around so what you get is x is equal to y squared flip the x and the y that's what an inverse means what it also means is a reflection about the line y equals x so you're reflecting a line I should make this one give it a little curve right because it is a parabola after all Give it a little curve. Give it a little curve. So when you take the inverse of a function, what you're really doing is you're doing this. You're taking you're taking a function and flipping it about the line y equals x. Right? Y is equal to x. You're flipping it about that line. So, okay, let's do a little algebra on this. Well, if you're gonna do a little algebra, you're gonna get y by itself. Y is your function, y is your independent variable. X is your dependent variable. Oh, sorry, y is your dependent variable and it's dependent on x, so you wanna get y by itself, right? So you take the square root of both sides. So y is equal to square root of x, right? But what we talked about was square root has to be plus and minus, right? So square root of anything is plus and minus. Now remember, we don't have a number in there yet, right? So do we have to write in plus and minus here? Not really, because we haven't taken the square root of x yet, right? It's just a variable, right? By definition, you take the square root, it's plus and minus, right? So let's leave it like that. Not Let's not put plus and minus there, okay? Now, if this is what's going on and you're taking the inverse of this function which means you're reflecting about the line y equals x which means all you're going to do is flip the x and the y's you're switching the numbers right if you're going to switch the numbers let's graph it let's create a table well if we're going to create a table all we're going to do is flip these guys so the x becomes a y so 0 1 2 3 negative 1 negative 2 and the y becomes an x 0 1 4 9 1 4 okay we can test this if you want right what's the square root of 0 put 0 in here well square root of 0 is 0 What's the square root of 1? Square root of 1 is 1. What's the square root of 2? Well, square root of 2 is just square root of 2. Right? What's the square root of... Um, oh, shoot, I'm putting this in the wrong direct, wrong way. Check this out. The square root has to go here. So over here, uh, y is equal to, no, no, that was correct. Y is equal to square root of x. So square root of x is equal to 1. Square root of 2 is equal to square root of 2. Square root of 3 is equal to square root of 3. Square root of negative 1. Oh, no, no, I am already put in the, here. Square root of negative 1. Square root of 1 could be negative 1. And square root of 2, square root of 4 look at this look at this i'm messing this up four is two square root of nine did i confuse you guys enough square root of one is negative one square root of four is 
can also be negative too, right? I don't usually do it this way. I'm trying to push it, right? So square root of four, you put four in for x, square root of four is two, right? But it's not just two, it's plus and minus two. So instead of putting minus here, I'm gonna put it here, plus and minus, right? Square root of nine is not just three, it's plus and minus three. Square root of one, well, it was one and negative one, so it's plus and minus one, right? So we don't need these bottom guys, we can just take them out, right? I hope that's clear. I sort of mucked it up in the process, right? Crafter, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. So check this out. What does this mean? That means if we're going to graph this, when x is 0, y is 0. So we're here. When x is 1, y is plus and minus 1. When x is 1, y can be here or it can be here. When x is 4, 3, 4, y can be plus and minus 2 here and here, right? And then 9 is plus or minus 3. We're off the board again, so let's graph this. Right. Okay. We snacking on anything today? I got, the, I got some grapes. They're pretty good grapes. That's some that are loose here. They're really nice grapes. Just a little. I had a good breakfast. Let's see our grapes. I'm just going to focus on my grapes. There you go. Really yummy grapes. Oh, that one looks like it's got a little... Well done. Oh no, it's just the end of it. Check it out. So it's pretty yummy. All right. As well as learning how to calculate... Da -da by hand, no, I would not recommend <laughs> high definition grapes, high definition grapes, right? So take a look at this thing. This is what the inverse means of this function, right? Now remember, I keep on calling the function, but you can think of it as a relation if you want. So if you take this function, this relation, and take its inverse, that means switch the X and Y around, switch the X and Y around, means you're taking this function and flipping it along this, you get this. Now here's where the problem comes in, a system saying the plus and minus. If we say this is a function, then its inverse for it to stay a function means that it has to pass the vertical line test, which means for a given x value, it can't have two different y's. For a given x value, x is equal to 1, it can't have plus or minus 1 as an answer. For x is equal to 4, you can't have plus 2 and negative 2. You can't have an x pointing to two different y's. That's what it means for it to be the definition of function, right? If the question was, this is a function, then you have to decide if you're gonna kill the top or kill the bottom of this, depending on your system. Usually you kill the bottom and you say, oh, which means you're killing all the negatives. Oops, all the negative values, okay. Which means the inverse of this function is gonna be this function and this function looks like that. So you don't have the negative results when you take the square root of a number. However, if I said find the inverse of this relation, right? Then if it's, I define it as a relation, that means this can be a relation. That means the negative numbers can remain which also means that these numbers would still be there. Okay. So it's all about definition. It's all about definition. Okay. Usually in high school mathematics, you're dealing with functions. 
So you end up eliminating the bottle. But let's assume you have this. Let's see if our green pen is doing. What if you had this? Y is equal to negative square root of X. If Y is equal to negative square root of X, then your graph would no longer be the top guy. It would be the bottom guy. Because the square root of X, you would define to be positive and you're taking the negative of it. So that part would be the legit answer. Okay. Does that clear things up? Is that okay, system? Or anybody else that's uh, wanted to know what this is about, right? It's it's interesting. It really digs down deep into the essence of what it is that we're doing, right? Most people don't appreciate this. And system, thanks for bringing it up, by the way. Um, it's important to have a visual of what it is really that we're doing and why it is that we're doing it, right? How does the syntax work? And it all it's all about the word, right? Function. Function. Oops, function. Y is a function. That would mean take inverse of Y, which is a function. Right? If I say this is not a function, whoop. Or if you don't specify, right? Uh, I think it's legit to put it that way. It really depends on the teachers as well and the curriculum. Like that's the kicker with this, right? It it's really dependent on how you're learning it, right? But the syntax, the math, is it's just there. It's just there. It, it like that's the thing with mathematics. Uh, a lot of unfortunately they make special rules in math to apply to a certain system and people think those special rules are universal and you can do that in the language of mathematics whenever you come across it but that's not true because that applies only to that system right so for example when you're doing uh, calculations if you're finding maximum area maximum area in general right your graphs for maximum area when it's quadratic you go from here to here right you end it there your domain and range right why because you're still solving for quadratics but you can't have a negative area when you go down this way right you can't have a negative area so you eliminate anything below the x-axis okay because you can't have a negative value for that right that's the definition of the system however for quadratics you can have negative numbers right that's they're infinite okay i hope that helps out i love i love talking about this stuff because it's it gets into the nitty-gritty of what it is that's going on right the back crack the back nice chill stream I like it I like it little math talk is a good place to be yeah I get it the inverse relation is certainly both positive and negative results I was simply uh, trying to emphasize the importance of the principal square root as it's called uh, is it called the principal square root um, principal square root okay i was just pointing out that the square root used in the quadratic formula is meant to be a function and assumes just the positive values the plus minus comes from elsewhere uh not necessarily a quadratic function but yeah i, I appreciate by the way the system i didn't mean to uh, pound on your statement i know what you were trying to get across uh, and 100 percent legit I just like building on it uh, so I sort of use your uh, what you pointed out to build a little bit deeper on that thing little P thank you very much for following there's a couple other people that followed I saw the zombie pop up uh, someone's been mentioning well we've been talking about it for a while to change the zombie to something else but <laughs> we haven't got around to it <laughs> 
but system thank you very much for bringing that up because it is an important distinction right some people um, they, they unfortunately uh, you probably know because you you know this right uh, there's a lot of people doing a lot of mathematics in school that they really don't know what it is that they're doing they just get something to say this is it but what is that right no worries I'm likewise happy to talk about it awesome awesome system and it really gets down to the nitty-gritty of it right what's really going on yeah you have to understand the definition of function to realize that oh you eliminate the negative part otherwise it wouldn't be a function right and people are like what do you mean well that's what it is that's the definition of it right it's like giving a range giving a domain what something can or cannot be right fun right now it's crazy right now spring break by the way gang so I'm assuming there aren't too many people doing a lot of mathematics I, I have uh, half of my students no more than half of my students I'm still working with there's a couple of students that we reduced a little bit one of them we took a week off because I do private right I'm not in the system so I teach math I think math is math every day is a math day <laughs> whenever you can do math you do right uh, I agree there's no use in shoving a definition down someone's throat without motivating it and understanding why we define certain things indeed right and by the way gang uh, the reason we talk about functions and, um, is is important right because functions are uh, about being able to make predictions right so when we're talking about functions it's extremely crucial in our world so for example one of the one of the things that I use to explain functions to my students is this right just imagine if uh, you know you're driving a car some some of my students drive a car some don't and I usually ask them do you know how how to drive a car or what the principle is they go yeah I go okay what happens when you sit in the car put the keys in the ignition turn on the car right and put your car in drive and put your foot on the gas right some people say the car moves some people say the car moves forward that's the distinction between a relation and a function those that say the car moves they're defining it as a being a relationship those that say the car moves forward they're defining it as a function because if they say the car moves they're not specifying in which direction does it move forward backward left right up down well if it moves forward or backward it's no longer a function because it's not predictable right it's predictable on those two planes but it's not predictable per exactly what it's going to do right so it becomes a relationship you put your foot on the gas and the car moves it becomes a function when you can make the prediction that it moves forward when you put your foot on the gas the car moves forward that is now function with that you can make predictions accurate predictions right system also the difference between taking square roots of positive real numbers all real numbers and complex numbers is important uh, taking that let me read that again also the difference between taking square roots of positive real numbers all real numbers and complex yeah 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 it's once you delve deep into it all the meanings of why certain things happen pop up right and those meanings have uh places they they apply in the real world uh which is super cool which is super cool fun fun <laughs> by the way gang i'm gonna uh, load up our uh superman reading on uh, it's already available on bitchute and rumble I already let it loose and it's going to be available on sensor tube after we finish the stream okay so i'll uh, let loose uh, our superman number 37 from number uh from 1954 comic book reading that we did like uh, four days ago four or five days ago on uh, twitch uh, I'm letting that loose today uh, most likely today anyway it's, it's an interesting read a very historical piece right after World War II a few months after World War II had ended Superman number 37 comes out right and we did a reading of it uh, it's interesting it was a good story 
interesting stories right does the American education system make people learn formal logic for mathematics in general uh, Nico Nico American education system neither the American nor the Canadian education system teaches thinking in school it they teach obedience okay so system make people learn formal logic for mathematics in general they they don't really they, it's horrendous here like there's you can't even discuss it on that level so sad so sad crafter one thing i really miss in high school is, is real proofs yeah we saw a few but barely any barely any barely any thing bobber thank you very much for the twitch prime sub i don't think so uh system says i don't think so regarding the formal logic uh i don't think they teach any logic or set theory they don't teach yeah system they don't teach any of that uh and uh, nico really the the processing uh the problem solving of a lot of students kids coming out of universe uh, coming out of high school even university is atrocious atrocious especially in terms of mathematics uh logic right it's very emotion driven because with emotion uh driven curriculum indoctrination you can control people any which way you want you can you can you can do anything to a society if you indoctrinate them into an emotional state of reaction right it's crazy crafter now university my classes are basically definition proof statement proof definition proof that could be good crafter it could be bad right system uh crafter same here i love and hate it for different reasons not system we're on the same page it could be good it could be bad it's a love and hate relationship ding or chicho do you think the Rajra and the other these who create the world education system or uh, i uh, ding bobber we can't talk politics on this mass streams let's let's just say our centralized education system is horrendous horrendous we can talk about the politics of it in the future okay I want to make sure the math stuff goes uncensored too. Um, if we've done mathematics, if it starts off going down a, a road that we can't discuss on sensor tube, then so be it. But if we've already done mathematics, I'll keep it strictly mathematics because it's important to make sure as many people have, uh, possible have access to this information. Uh, system. Some of the teaching isn't done super well. No system i say horrendous i don't think crafter i don't think there's any country that really teaches formal logic i don't know i've had some students that are from international students that have a pretty good at it my bad thing Barbara says i might be wrong uh russia like really the mathematics level coming out of russia and some of the eastern european countries and some of the like iran the mathematics level of those coming out of iran is through the roof right like like you can't those students come here and they go <laughs> what you guys are teaching what <laughs> no wonder it's so messed up here right uh, peligo i'm going to study philosophy at uni in, uh, in england come september and the course includes a module in logic is that the same thing and what is it um, philosophy the mathematics of logic is uh polygo is is crazy uh, for me it was ridiculously easy i when i went to university i took one logic course through the philosophy department just because i wanted to see what type of mathematics they were teaching through that part because it was mathematics right i i needed mathematics electives and i thought oh, philosophy of logic cool mathematics driven cool and it was just truth tables and the class was huge it was like 300 people or something like this and most of the people were having an extremely hard time with this and i was like man it's just 
like plus and minuses multiplying positive and negatives if you understand that two negatives multiplied together give you a positive a negative and a positive multiplied together give you a negative a n n positive and negative is negative and two positives gives you a positive uh, congratulations you just did truth tables like it, it shouldn't be that bad just think of it as pure just syntax don't try to get emotion into the philosophy i think that's the kicker right when they go into logic there's no emotion involved it's just syntax of the language of mathematics that's it All right it's not it's, it's not linguistics it's not language even though they use language to confuse people right glyphtenoid my understanding is that if there is one and only one uh, range value for a given domain value yeah there, there could only be one y for a given x right that's what it means your range is y defined as y and your domain is your x right system look at propositional logic and uh, predicate logic that's uh, likely what you'll do okay you have a function you have a function exactly gift and art nico well in the netherlands kids from the age of 12 are divided according to capacity and only the top 0.1 percent is taught formal logic in high school 0.1 percent a 0.1 percent really nico that's it oh that's sad crafter international at age 12 so sad crafter international students tend to be those that went to international schools and those usually differ a lot from the normal schools ah uh, no not necessarily crafter um, I met a lot of international students at university from all over the world and they were pretty powerful and they didn't go to uh, international schools uh, in the high schools not necessarily I've come across students that just moved here to Canada they're not oh okay I see where you're going with that crafter yeah I don't mean just international students come to a country uh, come to Canada to study and then they're gonna go back or something I'm talking about international students the people who have moved here from another country uh, you know from Eastern Bloc and Korea is pretty good at mathematics and Iran and stuff uh, their mathematics is pretty powerful I've been told uh, a lot of people uh, struggle with it a lot of people might struggle with it with uh, a philosophy of logic right uh, if they're not from the math department anybody who studied mathematics should not have a hard time with philosophy of logic just learn the basics uh, of uh, the syntax of the language of mathematics like how to multiply and solve equations and stuff Thing, Robert Chicho. I had a teacher in college on tenure who would literally show slides, barely summarize, and skip to next slide, then sit down and let us figure it out ourselves for the rest of the class. Other teachers in the program were great, but not him. Yeah, I've had some horrendous teachers as well, Ding Bobber. Right, crafter, but I know that. Uh, that are believed to have better uh, curricula like Russia Iran but those also don't do that much better on those uh, PISA tests the standardized tests are not testing your ability to do mathematics they're testing your ability to how well you know the language that you're being tested on and how you can solve problems that shouldn't have been problems to begin with right they're basically psychanalysis they're not uh, analysis of uh, how well how intelligent somebody is their personal personality tests really but they go oh cool thanks uh, seems to be uh, that we over uh, complicate things and perhaps people are overthinking it yeah yeah indeed people overthink it right because when you say it in a certain way because people are just saying it in language they think it means this but then if you break down the language into uh, or quantify that language it means the opposite right Nico yes it's not in the 
official curriculum so only the mathematics inclined students of the uh, gymnasium schools are given the option hmm. and most of them opt out of it huh it might be slightly higher but anything between 0.1 to 0.5 percent seems a good estimation really that's off that's not very many uh, my my theory is people should be being taught mathematics on a very higher level than, than they are right now our societies would be better off for it i know people are saying oh everyone doesn't need to do mathematics everyone doesn't need to do this it's like saying everyone doesn't need to know how to read and write right everyone needs to know how to read and write and everyone needs to know how to read and write mathematics okay in belgium two crafter eh ding bobber my biologist friend recently bought a eleven thousand canadian super computer with his professor who he works under the process to process data and use machine learning impressive stuff impressive <laughs> maybe they bought it to mine some cryptos <laughs> and they're just saying <laughs> they're doing it for that <laughs> taxpayer fund funded crypto mining machine but an estimated high, higher two eh? percent in Belgium uh, that we get taught logic damn supreme leader of twitch hello hello how are you doing and gang don't forget free Assange free Assange free Assange Julian Assange is a journalist and publisher that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our Julian Assange on WikiLeaks playlist okay. those usually go to study math or go into engineering or physics only one to two percent I don't know I'm biased that's not enough thing about where ah, yes probably Nico well six percent goes to a uh, g gymnasium and a quarter of them is math money inclined only one fifth of them opt to take it uh from my experience okay it depends on some of the electors like uh, when i took philosophy of logic at university I, you did gigantic truth tables and stuff and you solve certain problems and stuff like really i f i found it ridiculously easy uh maybe it was just the mindset i was in at the time it was a first year level one though so it was it was it was really geared towards the easy uh easy front again i'll say this again learn math if you're struggling through it kudos on you you're making yourself stronger you're building your neurons you're making them thicker they're firing right it's like going to the gym and lifting weights you get tired you get sore the next day you got to eat well you got to rest well you got to do it again and again and again but when you do that you get stronger physically if you study mathematics learn the language of mathematics and how to apply it in your world you become smarter and not just smarter but wiser okay as you the you know experience more of life and process more data more information and use the language of mathematics to improve your life man math makes you smarter you can't lose learn it right Zeno's paradox oh, I forgot what Zeno's paradox is crafter we had formal logic in first semester but we saw a uh, uh, predicate logic truth tables electoral boards electoral boards I don't know what electoral boards are we saw how to uh, make some adder I guess that might not be formal logic anymore yeah I don't know I I didn't take it beyond that one course I just didn't like the direction it was going right it was just uh, I wanted more hardcore gift or not I think Zeno was on to something the universe manifests the infinite in 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 instant in infinite instantly it's amazing even though it doesn't uh, disprove motion 
So everything, so Zeno's Paradox, I gotta look this up. What is Zeno's Paradox? I'm gonna read this thing, gang. Elector bores with the and oh, and or, and or, yeah, 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 that's what they're called. Uh, electrical, electrical boards, yeah, yeah, we did those. Those were trippy, they just they were they were set to confuse people, but then once you understood uh, what was going on, that they're trying to like confuse you, then it just became yeah it became easy for me i just had to appreciate what it was so xenos paradox i'm just going to read this i don't know why i'm reading it through wiki but why not for non-political stuff this is okay source for mathematics it's okay source xenos paradox are a set of philosophical problems generally thought to have been devised by greek philosopher Zeno of Ilia in 490 to 400 30 BC to support Parm Parmindias's doctrine that contrary to the evidence of one's senses the belief in plurality and change is mistaken and in particular that motion is nothing but an illusion it is usually assumed based on Pla Plato's Parmindians that Zeno took on the project uh, of creating these paradoxes because other philosophers had created paradoxes against Francis view blah, 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 blah. I would have to look into this further the paradox Zeno's paradox fun again I hope you have good snacks I'm gonna pop a couple of more grapes or one more grape anyway he was fun was he fun a lot of that stuff um, the philosophy stuff uh, is super cool to play around with you're popping grapes as all cycle nice slowly we get into grape season oh man can't wait for fruits fresh fruit to come in he would use logic to make people second guess no values yeah. also called effing with people right <laughs> fun 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 stuff it's just messing with people right have you ever done that have you guys ever messed with people just to mess with them sometimes fun don't be mean just be fun right just be fun but in times of chaos it's best to be straight up right otherwise you might be uh, find yourself in some hot water which you don't want to find yourself in right <laughs> oh, of course <laughs> gift g liftenoid glyphtenoid fun this is a good name by the way glyphtenoid glyphtenoid i hope i'm pronouncing it right fun have you ever worked with Iranian students? Yeah, yeah. I have one here. I'll give you an example. I have one Iranian student come to me. It was about two and a half months before he had to graduate, right? This is grade 12, right? He was, he was related or a friend of a friend's, uh, a friend's friend's sibling, right? That was still in school. So he came up to me he called me up said hey chicho uh you know i'm so and so blah 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 i go oh, okay cool 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 uh yeah da, 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 we chit. and then he goes uh by the way i'm in grade 12 uh graduation is in two and a half months uh or well, let's say three months uh, he goes it's th three months until graduation and i need math 12 to be able to graduate i go what he goes i need math 12 to be able to graduate I go so you need another course to be able to graduate and it needs you want it to be math 12. he goes yeah i need the credit to be able to graduate and i need math 12 to be able to get into program that i want to get into i go okay dude uh up to you but uh it's really quick you have to do exactly everything i say and it's your schedule right he goes uh okay i go well do you have the material the booklets like this was long time it was 18 years ago or so 
uh, he goes, uh, I go, have you applied to the correspondence? Have you got, have you, do you have the course material yet? He goes, not yet. I go, dude, uh, apply for it, get it. So it took him two weeks to get the material. He came to me two and a half months until end of the school year. So we took the course material and I went, okay, taught him, do this, do this, do this. And every time I would teach him a lesson and tell him to do this, right? I say, okay, as soon as you're done, send me a message and we'll have our next session. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to see you on a set schedule. I'm going to see you as you can, as you process, learn the material. Right. And he goes, okay. So every now and then he would go do it at not every now and then more, more often than not, he would go do it that night and then send me a message in the evening or the next evening and say, okay, I got it done. Can we have another session? So we do another session. Uh, we got math 12 in Canada, Western Canada. Uh, and at the time math 12 was a way higher level than it is now. Like they don't do conics anymore in math 12 here. They don't do statistics anymore. So just imagine math 12 curriculum 18 years ago had a chapter on conics and a chapter on statistics. That would have been about minimum three months out of <laughs> out of a 10 month course they took that out right and they've taken the other th stuff out so that stuff was in there as well and he ended up doing it we finished it in two and a half months and he got like 92 percent on it and you you know off you go <laughs> into the world <laughs> good boy right he, he did what needed to be done and he got it done it's easy to do if you set your mind to it okay you need the foundations you need the foundations and that's the kicker they're not teaching the foundations in elementary school so um, kids are coming into high school thinking of oh, math hard and it's indoctrination programming it comes from mainstream like consumption as well right there was for years there was a Barbie doll right that said oh math is hard you press the button and the barbie said math is hard right math is hard what the f right i can honestly tell you the the students that i've worked with there's girls that i've worked with right that are they can learn math like this they are crazy fast math learners right on average faster than the than the boys they process it right but there's some kind of stigma attached with people saying math is hard right and i try to get that out of them right slick man awesome i missed a chunk there cooking but seems to be some great quadratic uh, grass here <laughs> yeah, <slick -like. laughs> and the inverse <laughs> and the inverse gang what should we do should we call the stream chicho the math wizard ah putin roaster how are you doing haven't seen you for a while i hope you're doing well fun 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 by the way has spring kicked in for you guys yet springs kicked in here summertime's coming summertime's coming <laughs> spring we're into spring first day of spring second day of spring all right fun 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 fresh fruit coming start eating fresh fruit as it comes spring is here insects spotted already insects spotted already eggs how are you doing our last snow melted you're not you still had snow you had snow until like recently wow x yeah my allergies are uh, really bad oh your allergies have already kicked in dang dang so we got people from two different parts of the world most likely x where are you from Putin, where are you from? You should, you guys just had your ex. You should, you still had snow on the ground. March, oof. Ah, it's a March. It's still a little bit cold here, so I haven't gone out in the patio to plant stuff. Sweden, oh Sweden, ex. We had uh, some snow coming down last week. Dang, Sweden, Sweden. You guys are uh, like Canadian weather. Uh, if you're on the coast. I'm assuming you don't have that much snow in Sweden in the southern part anyway um, for us uh, we haven't had our snow disappeared a while ago 
uh, still getting you know to four five you know four three degrees and you can have ice forming at four degrees Celsius right it's it's weird because at zero ice forms and melts right so at zero water can turn into ice and ice can turn into water at four water can turn into ice as well on it's called uh, getting um, what do you call it black ice on roads it's thin and it cools down just enough to hit that when it's four degrees outside temperature so it, it would have to hit the zero mark for it to uh, become ice Kurosh Kurosh you're Iranian <laughs> would you hold a session talking about derivatives in the future by any chance I'm really struggling with it in the last year of high school the topic is single-handedly ruining my math career uh, I really enjoy studying with this stream and I uh, assume I would be easier for me to learn derivatives this way uh, yeah Kurosh uh, we did you know I'm not touching calculus too much but we did do a session where we did here let me find it for you Chicho calculus because I've had a lot of people want to learn calculus for me to teach them calculus right oh man where is it where is it shoot we just did it recently um, oh here we go check this out found it found it found it found it found it found it is this one gonna be it yeah uh, da -da -da -da, calc one graph quadratic function I think this is the one April maybe April that was last year maybe there's better ones uh, but check this one out this sort of touches on it uh, this touches on it let me just go to my uh, drop in math tutoring folder where is it dun, 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 dun. hey oh I might have a better one than this by the way uh, um, let me find it let me find it because the next uh, session we're going to do is going to be a couple of weeks from now so i do want to make sure that you do have what you need so let me find it and then i decided to do a full-blown like intro to calc right geometry fraction here's our my drop in math here i'll link this up to drop in math playlist on sensor 2 matthew redeem 500 points thank you for redeeming 500 points fundamental theorem of calculus find the derivative there we go okay we open this up graphing functions oh here's another one what is calculus cubic functions systems of equations yeah there's a bunch of calculus stuff here here's another one uh, fundamental theorem of calculus this one goes through the fundamental theorem of calculus okay lays it out for you Kurosh. let me know how that stuff helps and we do have a discord page and we do have a mouth mouth folder there discord you can pop in there and in the heavy topics there's a math folder there so there are some people that do help people out uh, in that folder if you have questions this has been such an important stream uh, slick mix says when and of you upload this on BitChute, I'll be watching it regular awesome slick mate thank you so much my pleasure Kurosh I'm sure it'll help a lot I, I hope so if you have questions let me know um, and there are other times where I've hit it up I don't know if that's the one that I went through the beginning from beginning to end I might have done another one <laughs> I might have done another one uh, aside from that gang that's called a stream okay thank you for being here slick Mick thank you for the questions um, system thank you uh, for the engagement thing bobber everyone thank you for being here thank you for the follows thank you for the subs uh, thank you for the discussion uh, it's a lot of fun uh, if you want to know what this work is about I am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chycho if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work do this way patreon is a good way to do so okay 
everything I do is basically layered on mathematics. I don't put anything behind paywalls. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share alike. For those of you that were supporting this work on Patreon, thank you very much for the support, gang. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this. We are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chicho live, C H Y C H O L I V E. And again, gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the discussions. And to our mods, thank you for taking care of business. We do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Parlor, VK, Minds, and Gab. You can follow the work there and you can come to our Twitch channel anytime you want. And in the chat, if you type an exclamation mark social, all the links to those platforms will be there, including our Discord link at the bottom there. And you're definitely welcome to join our little community of a few hundred people to discuss whatever you would like. Thank you for the stream, sir. My pleasure, Kurosh. My pleasure. And good luck with the calc. All right. For live streams that we don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O is a podcast, and that should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. I haven't seen the schedule anymore today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to do uh, Chicho Salvia, the Menorah Chronicles, and uh, on Wednesday, we're going to talk personal finance. This is, the, this is the ninth live stream we've done in the last, like, 10 days so we're doing an 11 live stream set basically it was a nine live stream set and we did two unscheduled live streams so we got two more in the next two days one tomorrow at 10 a.m chicho salvia the Venorum chronicles and wednesday evening i believe at 8 p.m uh pdt my time uh talking about personal finance investing in personal finance stick mc i'll be there awesome should be fun and gang, we will be uploading the stream to SensorTube, to BitChute, and to Rumble. And if we get enough points, once that kicks in, onto Odyssey as well. And you can support this work on those platforms by liking, sharing, commenting. And if you're on SensorTube, you can support this work by joining SensorTube U membership. There's a button there. And there's a handful of you that are supporting this work on that platform. Gang, thank you for your support. It is because of the collective support we're getting on these platforms uh, through you that we're able to do what it is that we are doing and we appreciate it very much i hope you have a fantastic day and if you can make it we got two more days of live streaming going on and superman number 37 reading being released today most likely on sensor tube it's already available on bitchute and rumble from 1945 bye oops bye everyone <laughs> scared people scared me